Now think about it this way, okay? Remember that we've done frequency distributions? It's the same kind of idea except using probability instead of frequency. So we're going to combine those two ideas together, okay? First of all, we have to go back to discrete versus continuous and redefine that and make us uh, more familiar with it again. Um, first of all, discrete variables, variables that can be counted using whole numbers. Okay, so if it involves a decimal or a fraction, it's not discrete. Whole numbers, meaning we can count them zero on up. Okay. Continuous variables that can be measured. They're usually as intervals in a range of numbers. Fractions and decimals are a part of continuous variables. One of the things you're going to have to do in your homework today is to decide if the variable in question is discrete or continuous. So that's why we're revisiting it, just to make sure we're on the same page. So probability distribution. First of all, there's sort of a format that we've used a little bit, but you've probably used it more in other courses than in here, okay? The, the format looks like this. Okay, your outcome, whatever it is, the, the, the specific outcomes, and, and understand that for the outcomes, we're talking about all the possible outcomes for that situation because we're going to list all the different possibilities up here, and that, then down here we're going to list each of those probabilities. So the best way to describe it is understanding the sample space finding the probability of each one of those sample spaces occurring, and that's what we're putting in this little table. And it'll pretty much always be in this form. And I think the best way to kind of illustrate how to do this is to do it with, it, with an example. Okay. So here's the example. We're going to construct a probability distribution for getting tails while flipping a coin three times. That's our scenario. In order to do that, we need to know the number of possible outcomes, knowing that the coin is flipped three times. So we need to know all the possible outcomes. So since we're talking about getting tails, what's one possible outcome of flipping the coin three times and how many tails we would get? Three. We could get all three of them as tails. What else could we get? Three heads. Talking about tails. How many tails? Tell me about number of tails. So we could get three tails. We could get two tails. What else could we get in three coins? You could get one tail. What else could you get? Zero tails. Okay. Those are all my possibilities. Okay. When I flip three coins, there are four possible outcomes. Four tails. Because we're looking specifically at probability of tails. Okay. So those are my four outcomes. Those four outcomes are going to go up here. Now, the other thing that we need to know is the probability of getting each of these possibilities. In order to do that, we need to know the total sample space. Okay? Because we need to know what the probability of getting zero tails is. All right? So what I need to construct is a sample space of flipping a coin three times. Now we talk about all the different possibilities, okay? So here's where we got to look at the actual sample space. Why don't you construct the sample space? Okay. First of all, how many, how many should there be total? Four. Nope. Three. We're flipping a coin three times, how many for each possibility? Oh, that's Two. Good. So there's how many total should there be in the sample space? Two. Eight. Eight, two times two times two, two per slot, right? Okay, so there should be eight total. So go ahead and construct the sample space of three coin flips. So what would the sample space be for zero tails? If you got zero tails, what would that look like? Head, head, head. Okay, so if I had zero tails, it would look like this. Right? So if there was one tail, 
Okay? You'd need to create a separate sort of column for one tail, then a separate column for two tails, then a separate column for three tails. So, I mean, the three tails one is pretty straightforward, right? So make sure you find the middle ones. One tail, two tails. All right, so here's what it look like. Okay, and I separated them out. Again, zero tails happening here, one tail happening here, two tails happening here, three tails happening here. There's a total of eight. Like we talked about, there should be eight. Those are all the possibilities. That's the entire sample space. Okay. So we're combining counting ideas with probability. This is really what I've done. Okay. I've separated them into four columns of all the possibilities that we talked about on the previous slide so that I know how many different ways I can get those outcomes. There's one way to get zero tails. There's three ways to get one tail. There's three ways to get two tails. And there's one way to get three tails. So that tells me about probability, okay? So what I do then is find the probability for each possibility, for each possible outcome. So what's the probability of getting zero tails? One out of what? Mackenzie? One out of eight. There's eight total. So I can get this one way out of eight. What's the probability of getting one tail? Three out of eight. Two tails. Three out of eight. And three tails. Okay? So each of those probabilities line up. with the possible number of outcomes. So what I've done is I've looked at all the total possible outcomes and found the probability of each. And what we're going to do is take that and put it together in a probability distribution. Any questions so far? couple things that we need to know. The distribution contains all of the total possibilities. That means the sum of these probabilities has to equal one because it's everything. Everything is included there. One of the things you're going to have to do in your homework today is decide if you're actually looking at a probability distribution. And one of the ways to tell is if the probabilities add up to one, which in this case they do. That's one thing you got to keep in mind. The other thing is what's true about a probability in general. What does it have to be between? Zero and one. The other thing you want to look for is that each individual probability is between zero and one inclusively, meaning it could be zero or it could be one. But if any of these numbers here are bigger than one or less than zero, then you're not looking at a probability distribution because those numbers don't even represent probabilities. So those are two things you got to look out for when you're trying to decide if what you're looking at is a probability distribution. Okay. Let's actually create the probability distribution. This is all the work that it takes in order to do that. Okay. We haven't actually created it yet. That original chart, we need to fill that out. Okay. So, here's what it's actually going to look like. Okay, so on top now, notice I changed it. Number of tails is X, is the outcome. That's the outcome we're looking for, okay? And we decided that possible outcomes were 0, 1, 2, and 3. Those are it. So that goes on top. What we could possibly get for the outcomes goes on top. The corresponding probabilities go on the bottom. Okay. So what was the probability of getting zero tails? One eighth. One tail? Three. Three eighths, two tails? Three. And three tails. Okay. That's what a probability distribution looks like. So again, you have to find the sample space, you have to find the probability of each particular outcome, and then put it all together in the table like this.
Okay. You're going to have one other thing that you're going to do in this section. Um, and that is create a graph of the distribution. We're going to come back to the graph for this. Okay, but let's go through and decide one of the problems, one of the examples that you're going to have to do is uh, deciding if the distribution is a probability distribution or not, or if it's just some sort of random table. So let's look at that next and make a decision about it. Okay, so go ahead. If you want to take a picture of this page, feel free. And then we'll talk about whether or not this distribution is actually a probability distribution because this is something you're going to have to do in your homework. Okay, so what you want to look for, you want to look for a couple things. Okay, one, as Ashton was saying, do the probabilities add up to one? And two, are the probabilities between zero and one inclusively? And if the answer to both of those things is yes, then it is a probability distribution. If the answer to one of those is no, then it's not. Okay? So on this first one, <coughs> are the probabilities between zero and one? Yes. Do they add up to one? Yes. One fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth. They do equal one. So yes, this is a probability distribution. That's all there is to it. Okay? How about the second one? This one's true. No. Mm -mm. Why not? Because there's a negative. Negative for one thing. You can't have you can't have anything less than zero. You got another one greater than one. Yeah. So it, I don't even care what they add up to. It doesn't pass that first yeah, sort of level. Okay. So this is not a probability distribution because you have a couple individual probabilities that don't fall into the zero one inclusively range. Okay. You're gonna have problems like that in your homework. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Now let's get to the graph of that frequency distribution because that's something else you're going to have to do. So the next slide is you already have this, so you don't need to write this down again. If you want to take this and slide it down so you got some room under that frequency distribution that we, that we made to begin with, that's fine. Okay. So you already have this one. Okay. Now we're talking about graphing it. All right. So here's, here's what, you've got to, what you've got to have. You're going to have an x and y axis. Okay, with probability here on the left, on the vertical axis, and in this case, number of tails, that's our outcome on the bottom. And so that's why you see the 0, 1, 2, 3. For a different probability distribution, you would use different values for x. Okay. Essentially what a graph for a probability distribution is, is a histogram. Okay, so think about it again. Think about frequency distribution and histogram compared to probability distribution and a graph of a probability distribution. It's basically just a graphical representation of the same thing. Now, notice over here I have three tick marks because I, have, I, I go from one-eighth to three-eighths, right? So what do you think I should go by over here? Eighths, okay? We do, okay? One-eighth, obviously two-eighths is one-fourth, but we're not going to have anything at two-eighths anyway, or one-fourth. So here's the biggest difference between a histogram, which, which we would have had bars to go up to those points, for, um, for a probability distribution, we just draw lines. Okay, so at zero, I'm going to have a line that goes up to one eighth. At one, I'm going to have a line that goes up to three eighths. Two, it's going to go up to three eighths, and three is going to go up. So it just looks like that. In this case, it is, yes. Okay. Uh, so, again, like I said, think about the similarity between a frequency distribution and a histogram. It's basically the same idea. Okay. So when you're asked to graph it, you're just taking that data in the probability distribution and putting it in graphical form. Any questions?